folks. How's it going? This is Max from Woodsman's Finest. Um, I've got another review for you today in my Carving X series. Now I came out um, to this little creek here. Um, I hope it's not too loud everything. There is actually a street close by. I'm not trying to make this look like I'm somewhere lost in the boreal forest. But this is a really beautiful place um, here in the um, salt mining area in Austria um, where I come from like where my mom's side comes from. It's a beautiful place. There's straight ash trees. A lot of them were bent down by the heavy snow this year. Um, little creek here. Uh, it's beautiful. Um, and there's so much wild leek, or like, I don't know how you call it in English. Um, we in German, we call it Bärlau. It's amazing. You can make this nicest pesto out of this. I love this springtime. Anyways, let's focus. I've got something for you guys today. It's a little bit of a hybrid. Um, as you folks know, I usually do carving X um, reviews for the craft folk out there. And um, I was contacted by a um, blacksmith, a young up and coming blacksmith down in Israel. His name is Lian um, and he's from Lian Handcrafted Tools. Um, and he's making some really interesting axes. And also a very very nice combo and I'm gonna show you what I mean by that so here in my trusty paratrooper I love this backpack this is how you get Leon's axis and I'm just gonna bring this a little bit closer to you and I hope the camera is gonna focus it looks like it does um, this is a little bit new to me camera so I hope the quality it's actually good. So what you get is this beautiful linen bag. This is how the axe comes to you. Which is already a beautiful, beautiful piece just to store the axe or store anything else that needs a little bit of soft protection. So inside this bag there is the axe but before I'm coming to the axe I want to show you something else. Maybe some of you folks are familiar with this little axe booklet that you get when you um, purchase a Grand's Force Brooks. Well, Liam is, sen Lian, Lian, excuse me, Lian is sending something very interesting with his axes. Look at that, folks. A beautiful little booklet. It says, handcrafted for the craftsperson, which is gender correct, please. Um, the crafting axe booklet and then it, it reads something that's pretty mind-blowing to me for a young blacksmith um, providing a beautiful tool like that it says 25 year warranty sharpening lesson how to turn any blade razor sharp and keep it that way now is that something now um, I don't want to show you too much of the inside of this booklet because I treat it basically as Leon's um, creative property and I don't want to just you know publish it but just look at stuff like this just a quick overview just a quick view sorry it's a little bit overexposed everything he's even talking about these things I actually bought myself a, a little lens a while ago as well to look at edges that way but he's providing it for you guys so you can really get an understanding of what a burr means and how to polish your axe and everything it's just a beautifully done booklet and in my opinion this by itself is already really a lot of value um, beautiful idea beautiful idea here we are actually from this side here and a little bit without overexposure sorry guys it's, it's just a forest what can I do this is what you get. Now let's have a little bit of a closer look. I did some pictures already for you guys, of course, but I just want to handle it here, manhandle it here a little bit for you. So first of all, another plus that you get with one of these axes, and um, this is pretty rare. My Liam Hoffman, my Hoffman um, blacksmithing axe came with a very, very nice cover. Um, and I'm a big fan of axe covers, as you know. But you get one of these provided um, and of course Landwerke axes come with a beautiful cover as well um, But a lot of carving axes out there don't 
or the cover is really um, from a soft piece of leather so let's not underestimate that so this is beautiful na natural hand stitched vegetable tent leather with a nice brass snap um, and it keeps the axe really secure just a little bit of movement here that is the case with all X masks of that type let me tell you that but there's no way this X is ever gonna come out but I probably don't even have to mention that at this quality now folks the handle as you can see in the pictures is a beautiful piece of straight grained ash um, and it has quite a lot of curve to it now um, I want to say something about just quickly in, in general about my axe reviews um, a lot of the axes that I get I get from the makers because let's say I'm one of those folks who's using a carving axe in uh, a frequency and um, with let's say enough professional approach that I can actually give feedback to people who send me these axes So there is a little bit, of course, I'm getting these axes, some of them for free, some of them I bought. Um, and that's just to disclose all of that a little bit. But not everything that I'm getting, I'm 100% happy with every single aspect. So very often I'm getting a prototype or something that can easily be changed. And then I also, also always have to mention that not everything I don't like about an axe is just something bad. It might just be something that I'm not fond of. So I can only give my personal feedback. So when this axe came to me, I just realized that the handle is very comfortable, especially here at the butt end, where this like really nicely done fawns foot is. It really feels well. Usually this part here is too thick by a lot of makers. And then it just doesn't really feel nice. Um, and you, besides having a little bit more weight up front here, you really gotta cramp your grip a lot. So these blows here are really nice for heavy blows, whatever you know, whatever you wanna do with it. And at this point I just wanna mention what you would call maybe the philosophy of use of this axe here. Um, as I said in the beginning, it's a hybrid axe. You know, it's a craft axe, it's it's for craft people. But Leon really pointed out to me that he usually makes bushcraft axes, and this is kind of his um, transition into something that you can use for a lot of different things and that brings me to the handle again the handle is about 40 centimeters long which is a little bit longer than your Hans Carlsen um, and a lot of other carving like small to medium carving axes that come around like a 35 centimeter handle or something so it gives you just a little bit of extra leverage that also means this axe is just at the threshold so to say to use it with two hands with anything shorter than that and let's take away these two inches this would be absolutely silly but here at like 40 centimeter length I can see this axe being used for I don't know something like six inch tree something like that in a two-handed fashion okay so that up front for this kind of purpose having this like curve in the handle is actually quite comfortable when it comes to carving these over curved butt ends that I see a lot on carving axes now trying to make them look good and everything rather leans to the cutting edge actually leaning forward inwards nearly like an ads you know um, but for this kind of two-handed use and a more of a bushcraft camp axe type scenario this is actually very very useful we having here kind of a tie between those two aspects and how the handle is formed so it's neither wrong nor the perfect option for a carving axe okay let's just leave it with that um, and I really find though that he, he did a great job here with the ergonomics I have medium sized hands and this fits me very well there's no point going any smaller and not like making stuff for really big hands because this is not the average the average is the average okay so another thing is um, up here the, ha the handle becomes quite wide it's still nice and thin, or like not thin, but it's rather narrow, which is really lending itself to giving you a good feeling for where the cutting edge is. But it has rather more of a like thinner portion or ridge in the back, and the front is a little bit rounder. So there is a little bit of room for improvement with the handle 
overall design but I talked that with Leon and not everything that I'm getting is 100% representing maybe the state of the art of the of the craftsman so as I know for myself with every axe handle with every piece I make I'm getting better so if I'm getting an axe that I received in this case I don't know a few months ago until I really was able to make a video about it um, there's already stuff moving and I give feedback so please take this for what it's worth you know that I'm always saying the axe handle is the least concern about an axe because as a craftsperson craftsman craftswoman you're able to make your own preferred handle what it comes down to is the axe head and then there is another very important aspect here he doesn't use any steel wedges so just in case you wanted to change the, the handle and this is a very smart decision you know okay so that that far to the handle very great could be a little bit less perfectly sanded so it's a little bit slippery but I'm just you know I'm just rambling now because you know some people might like that you know especially if you use it with two hands other people might just not like it and just rough it up a little bit you know it comes all down to customizing the stuff to what you want even with this portion here being a little bit wider and maybe a little bit like wide in this section here for my hand it might be very great for somebody else and if there's too much material I can take some off if it was too small then it would be a concern okay so I just want to keep it with you so now some of you might say yeah but if I'm like paying about 200 bucks which you pay for this axe um, I want to get whatever you know it should fit me perfect well that's not gonna happen you know nothing fits everybody perfectly so um, and I don't have to justify anything about this axe because it's a great axe I'm just want to I want to say that on the side now for the axe head Leon is using what he's calling high carbon spring steel so something along the lines I guess of 52 uh, sorry for 5160 something like that and I have really great um, personal experiences with that steel because in my opinion an axe can't be hardened um, to the same degree as a, as a carving knife can be because of the impact it has to take you know so it needs a lot of toughness and spring steel is just a great steel for that you know um, as you see in the pictures so I'm giving you a little bit of a shot here but mainly I want to see I um, want you to have a look at the pictures as well so I'm giving you a little bit of a shot here this is a beautifully finished top of the axe here it has a very nice taper a nice eye with a um, big enough pole in order to balance out the axe so we having a balance that's about here which is great a lot of axes have their balance point right behind the head so we're about here which means the axe feels more balanced because any every centimeter and inch that it gets closer to my hand the axe feels less top heavy right so when we're having the balance point here or here that makes a whole lot of difference for my hand the axe itself is very nicely finished and as Liam always refer Leon always refers to there's the section about here where you see kind of the scale blowing off after the forging process exactly here so this is exactly where you got your quench line which is nice the maker's mark here very nicely done other than that we got a pretty classic um, I would say about five inch cutting edge um, Nordic inspired axe design with a nicely um, decorated or like done beard that has a second scallop here um, and not too much of an upswept toe and here comes in the hybrid a little bit um, it's also easier to make an axe mask for this type of axe I have to say at that point but we don't have this extreme upcoming toe where the neck here would position itself rather in the middle of the cutting edge but here the beard is rather extended down First of all, this is really nice for smaller tasks to get my hand right behind the cutting edge. And in this case here, I'm um, consciously talking about smaller tasks because of the profile of the axe head. Um, and as usually, I have no preparation for this kind of video, so I'm just telling you this stuff as I go along. Sorry. Um, 
As you see, we have a nice taper here in the axe, I showed you that before, which really reminds me of a Grand Force Brooks um, small forest axe or um, one of my wildlife hatchet. And what that does is it ends right behind the bevels in something along the lines of three or four millimeters. Now, my Carlson axe and a lot of Scandinavian ground um, carving axes, they end right before the bevels in about five millimeters, so they have enough meat to then form a nicely done 30 degree, be 30 degree bevels. Sorry. Um, in this case here, we're ending with something like three millimeters and then we have a continuously nicely curved, rather thin convex edge. And I hope you see it on the detail pictures as well, but I just want to give you another idea here. These are nicely convexed bevels. I wouldn't call them a scandy edge by any means. They really have a nice curve to them, but not very extreme, but a very gentle curve. This enables me, since it's a rather thin cutting edge, with a little bit more meat behind it, this enables me to really do smaller stuff with this axe, you know. Um, in a carving scenario, but also in something like a bush scenario. Um, camp scenario, splitting stuff, it's a convex edge after all. A um, little bit of limbing, chopping, you know, getting some smaller pieces of wood for your camp. And as I said, also in a two-handed manner. Um, yeah, what I want to bring in here is just a little bit of footage of me using the axe. But other than that, I want to finish off this review actually, or at least the talking part. Um, the axe came extremely sharp. Um, it's easy to restore. It's holding its edge um, as long as I expected it because it is after all spring steel That means a very decent edge retention nothing out of the ordinary, but also Way better than anything you could buy anywhere in the store um, If that makes any sense, you know an axe is an axe. It needs to be taken care of it needs to be sharpened You know, it's not a magic sword or something like that um, you get a beautiful package here. You get it nicely covered. Um, it comes beautifully in this little bag. You've got a great guide to this axe and its use and its maintenance. It comes from a true craftsman down in Israel um, working out of a beautiful little shop um, who really knows what he's doing. You're getting a beautiful handle, great steel, great heat treat. Um, and there was even a little bit of a personal um, note in my little booklet and I'm sure Leon is gonna write one to you as well when you're if you're deciding to go with one of his axes now price wise and everything to put it in the overall co um, context I would say um, for a completely handmade axe that is serving you in a carving and a bushcraft fashion and bushcraft is just again crafting carving something that you need out in the bush to live there comfortably um, $200 is really not a bad deal for being um, hammer forged um, coming out of a little shop and the whole package you get I just can say again I really think it's a great deal and it's gonna serve you really well now